everybody. This week we're going to be talking about how to blog. This is a follow-up post from last week when we talked about what a blog is and how it can help your website and why you should bother with one. If you haven't seen that, go back and, and have a look. So we'll talk about this week we'll talk about the practical implications of blogging and how you can make your life a lot easier. Some really useful resources that you can download as well. So let's get started. So how to blog and how to manage a blog in an hour per week. This depends upon how long it takes for you to write a post, but I think once you're in the swing of things, it's really doable in an hour a week. This week we'll talk about some examples of different uses of blogs, whether it's in, I want to show you how to use a blog within your website or as the main purpose. I'll, I'll give you some different examples from my websites. Different blog technology and software. These are your options when it comes to blogging and why I use what I use. How to pick some good topics that are relevant to your target market, how to find which ones are searched for and are more likely to get you ranked well in search engines, and some free downloadable resources to help you manage your blog. So first up, I want to show you my own blog, and it is just a blog site because the home page is a series of blog posts, as you can see. I have a mostly vegan diet, and a lot of the, the posts here are about, are about vegan food. There are other pages, but the purpose of this website is a blog. Another example is Everything for Redheads, the company that I run with my mum. And you can see that this is a normal website with pages, it has a shop and, and stuff like that. But if you click on News, Views and Info, this is a blog. I haven't called it that, but that is what it is. And here you've got all the posts that are related to um, having red hair and pale skin and, and all sorts of things like that. So that's another example. Now, this one that I want to show you shows how creative you can be with a blog software and it's a blog that I created because I taught English in Korea for two years and during that time I developed a lot of resources that I wanted to share with the community but also I wanted other people to share. So I created this website and these posts are not posts in the traditional sense. If someone goes to this page here there's a form that they can fill out that fill with all of the lesson information they can upload resources and they can describe it and, and do all sorts of things and once they've submitted that and it's been approved then it appears as a post on the timeline so it shows how creative you can really be with blog blogging software now when it comes to blogging you've got lots of options and you may have heard about sites like blogger tumblr there's uh, wordpress.com and they, they're great if you've got a personal, web, uh, personal blog and you just want to talk about a personal topic, you can go ahead and I've provided some links for those. But if you want to have a blog that's part of a professional looking website, then I would highly recommend WordPress.org and it's .org is important. This software is so popular that the majority of website hosters will provide a free automatic tool where you can install it in within a few clicks so you don't even have to go through the, the process of downloading this, the free software and uploading it. It's brilliant, it's really user friendly for creating your websites and it's also something that I use with all of the programs as well. So it's up to you how you're using a blog but if you want to use it in the way that we've discussed I would really really recommend WordPress.org. If you're thinking about how to create your blog posts and find some great topics and uh, you know have a look for what people are actually searching for, then I would recommend putting keyword research tool into Google and you will get this link here, which is the, the important thing is keyword tool external. Or you can follow the link that I've provided. And this is a keyword tool, research tool provided by Google. All you do is just put a topic in here and it provides you with a lot of information about what people are searching and alternatives and popularity and things like that. So for this example, I'm just going to use vegan food because that's from my first blog and I've done this quite a few times before so I know what's likely to show up. You'll have to fill in a capture form and then just press search. And you can see that it provides you with some key information. It tells you the competition and the global monthly searches as well as the local. The global or local may be more important for you depending upon way, what kind of business you have. I would recommend that you maybe sort according to low competition and the sweet spot is finding some key terms that have low competition but have a lot of searches. So as an example, definition of veganism is low and the searches are low so it's kind of not worth bothering with. But if I go to definition of vegan, the competition is still low but you've got way more people searching. So that could indicate that it's worth me having a blog post or a blog page 
a, a page on my website that is called this and just talks about it briefly. Another one is Famous Vegans. So you've got some people looking for that. It's got some vegan banana bread, lots of people trying to find that, so maybe that's a post worth doing. And you can see how very quickly you actually get some hot topics that people are searching for, but not necessarily always finding what they want, so if there's an opportunity for you. Another alternative way to find some great topics is to ask your current customer base or potential customer base what they struggle with, what questions they have, what they don't understand about your service or product, and then answer that in a blog post because it's likely that other people have those same questions and are actually looking online. Or you can always do some research on it. Now, once you have a few topics in mind, I'd suggest that you write all of them down in a Word document or online, just wherever is, is helpful for you to keep keep them all together. And I've provided a link to a downloadable editorial calendar because this makes your life so much easier when producing a blog. I think once a week is more than enough for just producing a blog that's attached to your website. Pick a day of the week that you're going to blog and try to be consistent. Then what I do is you can see that there's tabs along the bottom, pick your month and, and maybe replace it with the current month. And then if, for example, the first of the month is a Wednesday, then you just uh, do as I've done, one, two, three, four, five, all the way through. Then, for example, if you put your your topics on a on a Friday, if you was launch your blog post on a Friday, then for each Friday you'd want to put in a topic and just assign it like that. So I might do uh, definition of vegan um, vegan banana bread and, and so on and you can have do this for each month so you can easily plan out your posts for the next six months a year two years or something just after you've got a few ideas and what this does is it makes it so much easier for you to produce blog posts when it comes to the day of you making a post or the day before when when you have to sit down you know that you've got an idea of what you're going to write and you've probably been thinking about it, baking that idea away. But also you're much more likely to develop quality content because it's come from forward planning and consistency, looking at it from above ra rather than panicking because suddenly you have to write some content. So now it's action time. Do some keyword research on your keywords and terms for your website, whatever you think is important. And it can be really helpful to also use some of these keywords in your pages as well. Create a list of blog posts to add to your editorial calendar, which makes life a lot easier for you. And start with the most valuable one and write a blog post. Now, the actual process of creating a blog post, there are ways to optimize your content of your post and some amazing plugins for WordPress, for example, that make your life so much easier and they they pretty much tell you you know you need to do this more and do that less and move this around which does make life much much simpler then if you've got google analytics you can check the results over time and see what blog posts are working for you see how much of a blog how much of an effect a blog can actually have on your website if you don't already have google analytics then please install it it's a really really useful tool so that's it for this week thank you very much see you next time